Welcome back to Reviews with Elaine, because I have opinions. Today's opinions will be about Death Embraced, New Orleans Tombs and Burial Customs by Mary Lacoste. So this is a book written by a New Orleans tour guide about the New Orleans cemeteries, and it's very clearly written to largely just correct some misconceptions. Uh, now, I've had this book for a while, like we are talking about years here, and honestly, I can't actually remember if Michael Bill lent it to me or gave it to me, so Michael Bill, if you're seeing this, please tell me if you want this back. Uh, and I've never read it for numerous reasons. Primarily because while I am a New Orleans tour guide, I don't do cemetery tours. Uh, especially now with all the drama going on with St. Louis Number 1. So, St. Louis Number 1 is the big cemetery that most of the tours go to. But the problem is, it got to the point that there were way too many tours in there, and so the city shut it down. It opened back up relatively recently, but only for one company. And I don't work for that company, so I'm not doing St. Louis Number 1 tours. The second most toured cemetery is Lafayette, and yeah, my company used to do Lafayette, but it got shut down because people were acting a fool in there. And uh, there's talk about opening it back up, but there ha they haven't done it yet. So the important thing is my company aren't currently doing cemetery tours, but even before, I never learned them because of time and weather. You see, the cemetery tours are morning tours. Most of them are done before noon, and I'm not a morning person. I don't like having to go to work in the morning, and so one of the things I love about being a tour guide is I don't have to. I can just work nights. But uh, the other thing is heat. The cemeteries are on average about 10 degrees hotter than the rest of the city, and I cannot handle that in the summer. It would literally kill me. So I don't do cemetery tours. And while I'm not an expert on cemeteries, I know enough that I can answer my guest questions when they come up on my general ghost tour. So, like, generally, I never read this one because it felt like homework for a test that I was not taking. Uh, but I held on to it because, like, I was thinking I was going to read it eventually, and then it got shoved to the back of my shelf, and I just sort of forgot it was there. But I was waiting on the last of the book of the Fall of the Ill Rain series to arrive, and I thought it was going to arrive in the next couple of days, so I didn't want to start another long book and be in the middle of it when the book arrived. So I just looked for the shortest thing on my shelf. And I found this one. And yeah, I read the entire book, cover to cover, in about an hour and a half. Uh, so this book is pretty much exactly what it says on the cover. It is a informative nonfiction about how people are buried in New Orleans. It's got some basic information on history of the cemeteries, explanations of how the tombs are built, uh, why we have tombs versus in-ground graves, uh, explanations of how and when people are buried below the ground, uh, some talk about the different New Orleans cemetery customs, and specifically funeral customs, and a few random ass stories uh, that are related to cemeteries and death. And that is one of my biggest takeaways about this book. It is random. So this book is very clearly written by a tour guide. Not just because, you know, it identifies itself as such in the beginning, like literally it says she's a tour guide, and not just because uh, we actually in have included here a tiny bit of a sample of what a cemetery tour looks like, and not even just because she feels the need to throw shade at other tour guides, but because it is written pretty much exactly in the tone that tours are presented. Uh, so that it means basically we've got a lot of simple explanations without much in-depth history or analysis, and a variety of cool shit the guide happens to know. It's got a very colloquial, conversational tone, it uses ellipses like I do on Facebook, and asks the kind of obvious prompting questions that there is one answer that tour guests can just scream back at you. Uh, the chapters are even roughly the length of slightly longer tour stops. And that sort of annoyed me, because the tone works for tours. Like, tours are conversational. They are literally conversations. You're standing in front of people, presenting information to them. Uh, you prompt responses in people so that they feel included and they remain focused. You throw in cool random shit because you might have guests that are as ADHD as I am. And you, spec you simplify things because you just don't have time to go into the complex nuances in an hour and a half. And that's all great on a walking tour. That's what that is designed for. But it doesn't really work in a book. 
like, objectively, we have more time in this to go into nuance. And what I want in a history book is precision and nuance. I want footnotes. I want charts. I want primary sources and statistics. I want long-winded quotes by experts that you then have to spend a page and a half explaining what the hell it meant. Uh, in a history book, I want something that at the end of the chapter, I'm stopping to think about and anal analyze and think about the connotations of what I just read. And that's not what this book gave me. And as a tour guide, there's something about this book that I have to address right away. Uh, so as mentioned, the author Mary Lacoste identifies herself as having been a tour guide on the very first page. She then actually comments on the fact that the professional tour guides really are aiming to be historically accurate. That our job is that of the history communicator. And like, I like to jokingly refer to it as our job is to shout history at drunk people on the side of the street. But like, our job is to convey history. Then she mentions multiple times, very next page, that tour guides are prone for a lot of misconceptions and a lot of what she wants to do with this book is correct the misconceptions that tour guides spread. And I mean, she ain't wrong. I know that there are a lot of misconceptions that are spread by tour guides. And the idea that your tour guide, especially your ghost tour guide, is sort of BSing you, like, there is a reason that idea exists. It comes from somewhere. Uh, especially in the early days of ghost tours, there was sort of a culture of tell a good story whether it's true or not. But nowadays, most of the tour guides I know take extreme pride in getting shit right. I think especially in the last decade, people have begun to really recognize how important history is. Like, our history is the foundation that our present is built on. And understanding the past allows us to understand the complexity of the problems in our current culture. And a whole lot of Americans, frankly, are not getting accurate history in school. So for a lot of people, this silly ass ghost tour might actually be the first time they are faced with the reality of enslavement, of how little control women had of their own lives in the past, and how thoroughly racism was built into the core of our society. This tour might be the very first time they are ever asked to imagine themselves in the shoes of an African American woman in the 19th century South. So there is an ethical imperative to be accurate, empathetic, and unflinching, especially when dealing with topics like race, gender, LGBTQ plus history, and enslavement. But the thing that I really am always struck with is even though all the tour guides I know take extreme pride in being accurate, we all sort of talk trash about the other tour guides as if they don't. And Almost every single one of us has at least one tour guide that we look askance at and is like, mm, they're never right. But meanwhile, we ourselves are getting shit wrong. We are human. We're going to make mistakes. And the author here is really not immune. Even while she is talking trash about the fact that tour guides like are spreading misconceptions, she herself is spreading a misconception. She debunks the fact that people cannot be buried underground in New Orleans lest the bodies rise because of the high water table, and then immediately turns around and it says that graveyard shift comes from people whose job it was to sit in a graveyard and listen in case, you know, somebody was actually alive and was like ringing a bell to announce themselves as still alive. But that's a misconception. And that's a misconception that's easy to identify. Like, it takes a 10 seconds Google search to find that that is not true. And there are numerous times throughout the book that she tells stories that she has absolutely no way of verifying. And then, like, a chapter later, or not even a chapter later, sometimes a paragraph later, she's talking about how this other thing is a misconception that tour guides need to stop saying because there's no way of verifying it. And, like, even her section on voodoo is the one that really infuriated me the most. Because it is so oversimplified that, yeah, it starts to verge on untrue. And considering how much BS there is out in the world about voodoo, I really wish she had taken the time to either say more than just, it's like Santeria, or not said anything about it at all. And that is another thing that I see a lot on tours. We have to oversimplify. It is just a necessity. We do not have the time for complex nuance. There's also another reason we oversimplify things sometimes, and that is we have the problem of having no idea how informed our guests will be. 
Some guests come to us already knowing the basic history, and some come not knowing that the city of New Orleans was built on the Mississippi River, that Andrew Jackson was a general during the, during the War of 1812, that Louisiana was French, then Spanish, then French, then American, and that Joan of Arc was dead for 200 years before the city of New Orleans was founded. So we have to make things real simple for folks. But there's a point where oversimplification gets to the point that it has drifted into untrue. Uh, for example, there's a story that I read about in a history thesis uh, about a woman named Anne-Marie Barclay that I would love to include in my tour. I've even tried to include it a couple of times, but it's a story that's sort of impossible to include on a tour because I don't have the time to explain the social structure, laws, history, and the complexity that makes her story interesting. And the half-assed way I have to do it on the tour really undermines the amazing things that she did because I don't have the time to explain what made her different, what made her strong. And there's the failing of, by not explaining that, it starts to sound like any woman could have done that and that just any woman who didn't was lazy. And that's not the story I'm trying to tell. So I understand when tour guides oversimplify things. It's not always easy. Voodoo is not Santeria, but they are related. And you often don't have the time to explain the connections and differences on a tour. And that's what bothers me here. You do have time for that in a book. That's what a book is for. <laughs> uh, now, I will also say, uh, I am not immune to the problems of misconceptions. I am fully aware of this. I have made endless snide comments about uh, tour guides who dare to tell a certain vampire story on their tours as if it's true. And then I realized that I was telling a story for years that I had assumed was true because a tour guide that I knew had done his research said it was true on a tour, but I had never looked it up myself. And when I finally did look up that story about Lee Harvey Oswald, I find out it's not true. So, yeah, we are human. We make mistakes. But I also feel like if you're writing a book, you need to do the research to make sure you are absolutely sure everything you're putting on the page is accurate. I mean, hell, even just writing this review, which, you know, is a stupid YouTube review, I stopped and looked like five or six things up to make sure that what I was putting in this uh, review is accurate. Uh, but I also find it a bit strange that some of the misconceptions she felt the need to put down on paper to debunk are things that I have never heard anyone say. Ever. I have literally never met anyone who said that they thought voodoo was a branch of Catholicism. I have never met anyone who said that they think uh, a year and a day after the bodies are buried in New Orleans, they're taken out of the tomb and ritually burned in a bonfire. I have never heard that shit. And, like, maybe the second one I would have heard if I worked the cemeteries. But, I don't know, it's just a bit weird to be reading a book that is furiously debunking something I have never heard. Uh, also, her random bits of info about modern funeral industry across the board felt a little bit like they were taken directly from a brochure or a press release from a funeral home. Uh, and there's a sort of derisive tone that she takes to any mention of green death that I just didn't really like. Like, honestly, if you're interested in modern funeral practices, I would say check out Ask a Mortician's videos on YouTube rather than this, because, yeah, she's more in-depth, clear, and she explores far more options. But that makes sense because that's what she's doing and that's not what this book is doing. So it's just the bits that are in here feel a little bit out of place. Uh, but overall, I feel like I was never going to be the target audience for this book. Uh, I already know too much of the stuff that's in here and a lot of it was just not what I was looking for in the book. I would have been much happier with a straight history of the cemeteries, uh, something that discussed the architecture and the stories of the people involved in the building of the tombs and the people buried in the tombs. Basically, I would have just been happier with what was basically a deeper exploration of the history that is covered on cemetery tours. But if you don't know anything about New Orleans cemeteries and funerals and want an easy read that is not too heavy and not bogged down with complex history and something that includes weird little anecdotes, some of which are actually very entertaining, 
then yeah, this would be a great book for you.